need to talk about more layoffs. We need to talk about more real estate pain and defaults. We need to talk about the Fed going higher for longer. And we need to talk about the pain coming to real estate agents. Let's get into it. It is April 19th. This is your daily financial news. Unfortunately, we got to go to layoffs. Remember on this channel, we've been talking about the growing rounds of layoffs for probably nine, maybe 10 months. I've shared with you personal stories. I've shared with you that companies never cut deep or fast enough. Most of them will go on to have three rounds of layoffs and we are seeing that exact thing play out. First, we can talk about Meta. Meta has started another round of layoffs today. Uh, they've also indicated that there will be another round in April. When I first started talking about layoffs, I had a lot of comments from folks in the Silicon Valley, probably in engineering, computer science, developers, things of that nature, saying, hey, it won't affect us. Well, Meta today announced layoffs that hit technical roles. This is coming, folks. We have talked about this a lot. Get close to revenue. And again, when I say revenue, I don't mean some pipe dream project that will be the, the future of the company. Those jobs, those business line, those whatever, will get cut in a heartbeat by the accountants of the world. I know because I was one of them. So again, unfortunately folks, this is going to go on for quite a while. If Meta's having round three, then they're gonna have round four. Who's to say they don't have five or six? Again. As somebody who had to make these choices, I think the slow drip that appears that Meta is going through is horrible, horrible way to do it. The employees are clearly talking about it, clearly not productive, and it is just not good. Not to be outdone, not only is Meta, but Disney is coming around. I believe Disney is starting another round of layoffs this month. Uh, I believe this is still considered round two. Uh, there will be more coming uh, at Disney. Uh, and of course, let's not forget Open Door. Open Door coming out with what I believe is the third round, this time 22%. Open Door is cutting uh, 22%. I am shocked they're not closed door at this point. But yes, they are whacking 22% of the workforce in their third round. Folks, I don't mean to be a buzzkill. There's a lot more of this coming. But remember, even if we go from three and a half to five or 6% unemployment, it still means 94% un, uh, employed. I know that means very little if you are one that gets affected. But again, this, this is part of the cycle. I've hopefully warned you, you've hopefully taken action. Again, we will get through this, but there's more pain coming. Let's talk about real estate, right? Real estate. And be, I'm being very clear, when I say real estate, I mean the entire bucket of real estate. When I say housing market, that is single family homes. So we can just clean up some vocabulary. The real estate market is also going through the pain that I have been warning you about. What do I mean? We have Brookfield, one of the largest managers or owners of commercial properties, defaulting again. Yes, folks, you may have remembered us talking about Brookfield when they defaulted on a $784 million loan attached to two trophy properties in LA. Now Brookfield is defaulting on a dozen office buildings around Washington, D.C. Uh, to the tune of $161 million. So again, how can Brookfield do this? First and foremost, the debt is non-recourse. Second, why are they defaulting? They are not defaulting and you know these things will be sold on the courthouse steps. They're defaulting because they are probably in some commercial mortgage-backed securities, CMBS. And the rules inside the CMBS is you can't perform a workout unless you go to special servicer. So Brookfield defaults, 30, 60, 90 days go by, whatever it is. Special servicer gets uh, appointed. And now Brookfield can do a loan workout. It may lead to Brookfield losing the properties. That is a possibility, but it is equally possible 
that they just renegotiate a loan, extend the term, bring a little bit of equity to the table. So again, these will, these will be worked out. Brookfield may lose them, but I suspect there's a 50-50 chance they don't and they just perform a loan workout, especially because these are office buildings. There are not a lot of buyers for office building. And believe me when I say Brookfield knows this. Brookfield, I am sure if you asked them and they were given true serum, would tell you they fully expect to keep these buildings. Who's the buyer? Who's going to buy a 60% full office building? Nobody's going to buy that. Certainly no one will buy it for anywhere close to the loan value. So again, real estate pain is growing. I warned you about it. It's coming to multifamily. It's coming to uh, office. It's coming to retail. There will be opportunities. We are still in the first inning. I think this just continues to build and go forward. Uh, it's funny. I don't know if you follow Josh Dorkin. You may or may not know who he is. He was the founder of Bigger Pockets. You can actually find my interview with Josh Dorkin still on YouTube. I think it was from 2005. If you do watch it, forgive me, my face was very round. I was, uh, yeah, I, that, that video embarrasses me, but I digress. Anyways, Josh Dorkin on Twitter put out a post saying, hearing a lot of stress from general partners having to raise due capital calls. To which I replied, yes, of course. New syndicators watch or read bigger pockets and think they can raise money in a C-class building. I think there's a lot of people that were reading Bigger Pockets. A lot of people think it is easy and they have already lost their LPs money. Again, when I say these things, I am not talking about the professionals. I am not talking about the, you know, the folks that do it the right way, but you and I both know anytime something is seen as easy, the masses come in. As I've said repeatedly, that scares me to death. So again, more pain coming to real estate. Housing, not so much, unless you happen to be like Patrick Bet David in shopping at luxury. If you are shopping in luxury, feel free, write those disrespectful offers 30, 35, 40% below. There will be pain growing. There are some wealthy folks who are not liquid and they need to get rid of their second or third homes. So yes, more pain coming. Pension funds. I don't know about you, but one of the things that I was thinking about with all of this commercial in real estate pain coming is who has the debt? We talked about that 3,200 unit in Houston, Texas, where LPs, you and me, lost a hundred and million and the bank lost 14%. I was wondering who, who has the debt? Who has the CMBS? Apparently pension funds own a lot of it. So the largest pension fund, Calsters, it's a $360 billion pension fund, uh, is bracing for a $52 million write down. That's almost 20%. That's almost 20%. They are going to have to, they are looking at writing down their property portfolio. They've looked at their portfolios. Again, this is Calster's pension fund. Their office real estate is 20% of their real estate portfolio. Uh, I'm sorry, real estate is down 20%. Real estate is down 20%. They think it could go as low as 30%. Calsters is a California pension, so they also have uh, debt in San Francisco. They fear that their San Francisco assets may go down 50%. Not good. Not good. Uh, they did highlight that, you know what, real estate for a decade was a double-digit moneymaker. That is probably why they increased their concentration. But... It is a very illiquid market and buyers are not stepping in. So again, they, they will likely take a write down, a mark to market. And according to this article, they may be forced to keep the building. So Calsters pension fund may become an owner of office buildings in San Francisco. James Bullard. Remember folks, we talk about the Fed. They have this little thing called the Fed funds rate, which they bump and play with every six weeks or so. I believe we get the final one. Uh, next on May 3rd, it will be the, we get to our 5%, which I've called for over a year now. That will be the last one. But remember their second thing, they have their voice. They have the microphone. James Bullard is saying, uh, I don't see, I don't believe the recession talk is real. I favor more hikes, two or three. 
He sees Fed funds potentially getting to five and a half. I personally think that is a joke. I again believe, unfortunately, the May 3rd Fed funds meeting is a terrible date. We won't get meaningful economic reports till the middle of May that show the impact of Silicon Valley Bank and the banking crisis. I believe commercial lending has fallen off a cliff. I believe retail is broken. But again, we shall see what is coming. So again, Bullard thinks there will be um, one or two more. It is interesting that the market is calling 88% chance of one on May 3rd and about a 22% chance on June 14th. I don't think we do one in June. I think the data is so ugly in May uh, that they just hold tight and hope the economy doesn't blow up. Real estate agents. It is finally coming to bear that real estate agents are in a lot of pain. If you are following this channel, I've been warning you for over a year that transactions are crashing. They are now down 40% and I have bad news for you. They're not coming back. We are going to be in the four millions for years. So if you are in an industry that is paid on transactions, you need to, you need to skill up. You might need a part-time job. There's just lots of things to think about. Right now, according to article in Business Insider, Business Insider had this article, there are two licensed agents for every active listing. That should be frightening. Another stat that I thought was interesting is agents that are two years in the business, their average income is 8,600 bucks. Wow, that is not good. So again, folks, if you haven't already, I have an event this Sunday aimed at real estate agents, aimed at investors. We have to, we, there is a way to marry kind of the good real estate agents with real estate investors. We are gonna bring on a top 1% agent with Beth Traverso on Sunday, the 26th. Follow that up by Jason Pritchard, who went from having a W-2 tech job to becoming an investor, becoming an agent, and now running a big business. You can watch how that evolution and you can ask them questions. And of course, we're gonna bring on T Ty, T-Y-L-G, who's a 30 plus year vet, veteran in the business and a broker and helps me run the hub in Fresno, California. All of this is for you. Like the legends of real estate investing last Sunday, you are going to get to ask them questions. This is not a webinar, not a webinar. There will not be a single PowerPoint given. This is a Zoom meeting capped at 100. Only 100 people can come maximum. You will get to ask questions. I will pass the mic or whatever you want to call it. You will be able to ask Beth, Jason, or Ty questions directly. You will be able to ask that second, that third level question. If you don't come, shame on you. All righty, folks. Uh, again, remember also a lot of you asked about my next live event. I will be in Fresno, California on Saturday, May 13th. You can still take advantage of the discount sale 49, 49 bucks to come see eight hours of material. Real estate meetups have changed my life. If you read my book, One Rental at a Time, you know I went to a Bruce Norris event and it fundamentally changed my career. Let's, let's congratulate some folks. One Rental at a Time, we congratulate people doing the work. Mark, congratulations for getting your next deal. And Juan, congratulations for getting your first deal. Folks, this is the golden ticket. If I help you get your first deal, you get a golden ticket. If you're someone like Mark, you get your first, your second, your third. You can get as many of these as you want. Let's congratulate Mark and Juan. And I want to give a shout out to Gabriel. Folks, Gabriel was nice enough to come on the channel yesterday. It went live at 7 o'clock. And he's a new student of One Rental at a Time. He asked some questions. I, on this channel, the Daily Financial News said, I want to talk to more new investors. So Gabriel said, hey, I'm game. Go watch the video. Gabriel, your books are coming out to you uh, and your wife, Melanie. I hope you enjoy them. Uh, they'll probably go out tomorrow. Uh, but there you go, Gabriel and Melanie. And of course, Mark and Juan, congratulations, guys. Take care. Like, subscribe, comment. If you missed Sunday, shame on you. Take care. Bye.